Oh, look at what the cat dragged in, everyone. Nice little article here from the New York Times. Look at this. In Neanderthal's DNA, ancient humans may have left genetic mark. Oh, looky here, looky here. Let's read what, let's read what the cat dragged in over here, shall we? In 1997, scientists found the first scrap of Neanderthal DNA in a fossil. Since then, they have recovered genetic material, even entire genomes, from a number of Neanderthal bones, and their investigation have yielded a remarkable surprise. Today, 1 to 2% of the DNA in non-African, here we go, non-African, people comes from Neanderthals, okay? That genetic legacy is a result of interbreeding roughly 50,000 years ago, okay? See, now, now, here's the bullshit, everyone. They're saying the breeding happened 50,000 years ago, okay? Between Neanderthals and the common ancestor of Europeans and Asians, recent studies suggest that Neanderthal genes even influence human health today, contributing to conditions from allergies and depression. Now, check this out. First, these coccasoids were coming up with fucked up dates, making up shit, Trying to cover up your history, black man. You're trying to cover up your shit. Okay, that genetic legacy is the result of interbreeding roughly 50... First, they're telling some bullshit about 50,000 years ago. Now, do you think that's going to hold water? No, of course not. Because guess what? The Caucasoid, as usual, is going to change his story. And we're going to show you how Caucasoids lie. And when shit doesn't add up the way they want it to add up, then they start redefining terms and changing definitions. And here we go, just as they announced to the world Africans left Africa and fucked Neanderthals and created pale skin, stringy hair, white Caucasians that are only 2 to 5% Neanderthal. <laughs> See, that's bullshit right there because if a black African left Africa fucked a Neanderthal, the offspring be 50% African, 50% Neanderthal. If you took this 50% African, 50% Neanderthal and braid it back with the African, it would be 75% African, 25% Neanderthal. So how did you produce a pale skin, stringy hair Caucasian with only 2 to 5% Neanderthal DNA? Or as according to this little silly ass article, 1 to 2% Neanderthal DNA. How did you get a Caucasoid? with only one to two percent Neanderthal DNA. How did that happen, Mr. Neanderthal Ape Man? Would you like to explain the detailed process of how that happened? If you took a black African, made it with a Neanderthal, the offspring would be 50% African, 50% 50, 50 Neanderthal. Now correct me if my math is incorrect. Let's take this 50-50 black African Neanderthal hybrid, made it back with the African, what do you get? You get a 75% African, 25% Neanderthal that did not produce a pale skin, stringy hair, blonde hair, blue eyed Caucasoid with 1 to 2% Neanderthal DNA. Got it, Mr. Neanderthal hey man? Okay, let's continue on with this article because we're going to cut through your bullshit, Mr. Caucasoid. Here you go. That genetic legacy is the result of interbreeding roughly 50,000 years ago. There they go, making up time points, and I'm going to show you how, you know, when this shit. When, you know, shit doesn't add up, they start changing shit. Here you go. Now scientists have found that gene that the genes flow both ways. In a study published on Wednesday in Nature, a team of scientists reports that another instance of interbreeding left Neanderthals in Siberia with chunks of human DNA. There it is right there. They find in human DNA in these Neanderthals. Now in order for there to be human DNA in the Neanderthal, that means that the human has to predate the Neanderthal. But... They're going to come up with some bullshit, okay? This exchange, the scientists conclude, took place about now. They're changing the time to 100,000 years ago, okay? Yeah, that's a puzzling date because a great deal of evidence indicates that the ancestors of today's non-Africans did not span out Africa until 50,000 years ago, 50 to 60,000 years ago. But now they're finding human DNA in the earth. Also, now they got to change their bullshit, see? <laughs> they got to change it. So there they are, getting busted. Now... The question is, how did this Neanderthal get human DNA? How did it acquire human DNA? Okay? That's the question. Now they got to sit here and change shit around. Because this is what Caucasoids do, and I'm going to bust their asses like I always do. Now, here you go. Now, the question comes down to, this Neanderthal tested for human DNA. Now, how... Did the Neanderthal get the mitochondrial DNA of a completely different species, Mr. Neanderthal, eight-man Caucasian, Mr. Caucasoid? <laughs> okay. 
Over the last five years, astonishing advances in ancient DNA and analysis have provided remarkable insight into Neanderthal genetics. As a result, the evolutionary connection between humans and Neanderthals has been severed. In other words, evolutionary biologists no longer think of Neanderthals as a tra transitional species linking the primitive bipedal primates such as Homo erectus to modern humans. There it is. Okay. This stunning conclusion comes from analysis of mitochondrial DNA recovered and sequenced from Neanderthal gene. Neanderthal remains, DNA sequencing refers to the process of determining the exact order of the chemical building blocks, spaces A, T, C, and G, that comprise DNA strands. Okay, here you go. The average percent and locations of the differences between Neanderthal and human DNA sequence indicate that Neanderthals did not evolve into humans. So Neanderthals did not evolve into humans. How did this Neanderthal get human DNA, Mr. Caucasian Ape Man? Mr. Neanderthal ape man, Mr. Caucasoid, ape. okay, and see, these Caucasians, okay, the only way this can possibly happen is if there was a genetic engineering breeding program to produce new breeds of humans, okay, here you go, research concluded the first studies on three distinct specimens that date between 30,000 and possibly 100,000 years in age from three locations in Neanderthal range, Germany, Russia, and Croatia, the DNA sequences obtained from all three Neanderthal specimens display remarkable agreement with one another. In fact, the DNA sequences vary by only 3 to 7 percent. Okay, this sequence diversity compares favorably to that measured for modern humans 3 to 4 percent. Such, similar, such similarity within the species but dissimilarity between the species indicates that these animals, there you go, these animals, <laughs> which is the Neanderthal, did not make any genetic Hence, evolutionary contribution to modern humans. <laughs> so they call in the Neanderthal an animal. Because that's what the fuck it was. It was a fucking animal. Got that, Mr. Neanderthal, Caucasian ape man? And guess what this makes you? Mr. Caucasoid ape man, this makes you an animal. Which is why we see this crap right here. This is why we see this right here. Most unbelievable human tail. Boy, 21 years old, Moscow, functioning human tail. This is why we see this, man. Look at this, man. Now, you got these cockasaurs out here trying to say that this is a fake video because it's on YouTube. Everything on YouTube is fake. According to these Caucasians, anything that doesn't go along with their chimp delusions, you know, they try to write it off as it being phony and being fake. But here's this dude right here wagging his tail like a dog. See this right here? Like a dog. He's wagging it. That's a functioning tail. See that? A functioning tail. All right? Now, how did this Caucasian get a tail? Hmm? How did that happen? How, did, how? Why are we seeing this? Why are we seeing Caucasians walking around like monkeys? Look at this right here. This family right here is walking around like monkeys. Why are we seeing this? Because they're hybrids. They're not human. And just as they play games with what a Neanderthal is, they're trying to give you these little silly illusions that the Neanderthal was human, was a human being. There it is right there. This right here is the propaganda. This is what they're trying to make you think that the Neanderthal looked like. It was a, it was a human being, <laughs> even though its mitochondrial DNA was a completely different species. Okay, this isn't what a Neanderthal looked like, because we know a Neanderthal didn't look like this. And there we go. There's the skull differences. Look, look at that elongated case. Look at the eyes at the top of the forehead. Look at that brow ridge right there. This was not a human being. This was a fucking ape. Okay? An ape. There it is. And this, this is a human cranium compared to the Neanderthal. There is no comparison. Look at the eye sockets, man. On top of the head, man. Right there. Look at that brow ridge. That's the face of an ape. That's what you're looking at. You're looking at an ape. These are ape human hybrids. That's why the skull difference is completely different from that of a human because the Neanderthal was not a human being. It's a hybrid. It was genetically engineered. And these cockasoids are trying to cover that up. But you know, me, I'm going to come in and blow that shit to hell. And that's exactly what I'm going to do. Blow this shit to hell. To bloody hell. And oh looky here. They're up here toying around with, not only do they toy around with dates, they, they toy around with terms. They called the Neanderthal for for centuries, for a long time before they found human the Neanderthal DNA in the human genome. They used to think the Neanderthal was this ape man. It was not human. 
see and then once they found the DNA in the caucasoid now all of a sudden they got a humanized denanothal you know they got to start changing shit around just like they do right here with the with the definition of species okay now the dog and the wolf they consider it to be a different species now for you know first they were saying the dog's the same species as the wolf then they say the dog and the wolf are not the same species and now they're saying that the dog and the wolf is the same species now why do they consider the dog as being a different species from the wolf to begin with well why it's because the dog has human dna see the dog is part human now if i, I don't went over this on multiple videos but guess what we're going to go over it one more time let's get into exposing some more kakasway games here okay see they come to find out that the dog has human dna and of course as usual what does the kakasway ape man try to do he tries to cover cover up his tracks cover up his bullshit cover up all of the shit and he wants his all you know the one excuse they're always going to use is all oh, we had we contaminated with human contamination okay we contaminated the results of human contamination okay here we go here you go tells you and they tell you what they did right here okay we monitored the presence of a 148 bp human specific and 152 doll specific mitochondrial dna fragment in dna extracts as well as in negative control the total number of human and dog template molecules were quantified using real-time polymerase chain reaction PCR and the sequence were characterized by the amplicon coning and sequencing although standard here you go right here although standard precautions to avoid conti contamination were taken we found that all 29 dog specimens contain human DNA often at levels exceeding the amount of authentic ancient dog DNA see this is why they considered the dog as being a different species from the wolf because the dog is a hybrid <laughs> it was created it has human DNA and of course these scientists they tested the dog 29 different dogs 29 different dogs all of them tested for human DNA and to try to explain this they used all standard precautions so when you're using standard precautions in today's terms that means there is no contamination there is no human contamination there's no possible way you contaminated it so why are all 29 modern dogs testing for human DNA at higher levels than the ancient dogs ancient dog bones that you found okay it's because the dog is a created hybrid species which is why you see you caucasoids wagon tails eating bloody rare meat because the dog DNA was engineered into your genome why how do we know this because apes don't have tails and this caucasoid wagging, wagging his tail here this guy right here wagging his tail that's not the tail of a lemur that's not the tail of a monkey that's got to be a tail of a dog okay monkeys don't have tails like this the lemur doesn't have a tail like this this is the tail of a dog that's why you caucasoids are ravenous running in packs when you when you go to a rock concert man you act, people act like ravenous dogs running in a big ass pack <laughs> eating bloody ass rare ass meat okay there it is right there all right there we go and see just as these caucasians like to sit here and play around you know come up with propaganda trying to try to explain away how these dogs have human dna they come up with the same kind of propaganda bullshit trying to explain away how the neanderthal was just another form of human and they look like human beings even though they have the fucking skull pattern of a fucking ape and the body ratios of a bigfoot sasquatch which i've already known went into but i'm just showing you how they like they love to change terms around and come up with all this bullshit okay and we're going to get into that see see anytime a cock anytime a, anytime there's evidence that comes up that threatens their little evolution theory uh their little man come from apes theory because they come from the fucking ape but anything that goes against that every human being on the planet comes from a fucking ape they start changing terms around start redefining words and start coming up with new reasons first first humans left africa 50,000 years ago that was their little fucking nice little neatly tight timeline now they find that the nana thought he was human dna so now they gotta boost that back all the way to 100,000 years ago see they're changing dates 
They're changing terminology. They're changing definitions. And Neanderthal used to be considered an animal. Now it's considered human because the coccosoid has Neanderthal DNA. And now they're coming up with a different term for what the word 